Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. Got some body armor to test today. This is a steel offering from Caddy or Katie. Come and take it. This is a level 3A plus rigid panel. Got their combat quad bend multi curve plate setup going on there. Let's throw this sucker on the table. This 10 by 12 plate weighs 5 pounds 2 ounces. Now, some may say any level 3A offering that's very heavy considering. Some 3A plus ultra lights that I have to test are one pound four ounces, but this is going to pretty much offer you 100% stab proof. Now, we tested AR500 Armors level 3A rigid panel a couple years ago, and that pretty much stopped all pistol threats that you can imagine. It wasn't until we stepped up to the 5.7 with the 16 inch barrel that we were able to plug a little hole out of there with the SS190. So we're going to take a couple of those high speed threats at this today. I did bring the 10 and a half inch AR out. Maybe we'll see if it will stop the M855 ball. I don't believe from testing prior that the AR500 armor was going to do that. We'll be at about 12 to 15 feet Procono Digital. It's about 75 degrees outside today. We'll start with our 5.7 by 28 millimeter threats first. We'll use the FN PS90 SBR with a 10.3 inch barrel. We have the Black Dragon Fang from Vanguard Outfitters. We have the Elite Ammunition T6B, the Elite Ammunition T6, the Devastator 2.0, and then Factory SS190. The SS190 has an aluminum core and a steel penetrating tip, similar to SS109, except instead of lead, it's the aluminum, and these are only 31 grains. As always, for any of our armor tests, unless otherwise requested, we have a 12 by 12 clay briefcase that has a clay that's kind of similar to the FBI spec clay, not quite so much. So it's always a representation of back face, which you usually won't see on a steel plate because it tends to absorb more of that impact and you don't get as much back face signature on the plate. We have a cardboard box around our clay briefcase because there seems to always be concern with spalling and fragmentation from rounds that the plate does stop coming off and hitting vitals and whatnot. So we, we have the cardboard box there. We'll take a shot, move the plate around the chronograph so we get good velocity readings off these. We're going to start with the Vanguard Outfitters Black Dragon Fang. Velocity 2469. Now, Elite Ammunitions T6. This is a 28 grain all copper load, very hard copper on the C scale Rockwell hardness. Looks like I made it so it didn't want to. Oh, maybe because I was putting pressure on the barrel. And then a good way to use this rest, this gun. Velocity 2760. Now our. Now our Elite Ammunition T6B. Velocity 2688. Let me move the chronograph. Now the Elite Ammunition Devastator. Where did I move that way over there? Velocity 
And finally, our factory SS190. Velocity 2233. So far our box shows no sign of any fragments leaving the plate. Although those rounds typically are made of copper with the exception of SS190. So you're not going to get a whole lot of fragmentation coming off of them. Here are our five shots. One, two, three, four, and five. This fifth one right here is SS190. What do you guys think? No pass-throughs at all. Now there are some dimples on the back side of the plate. Maybe hard to see because of the Linex coating, but there is no pass-through. Now, this is the SS190 right here. And that dimple feels a little harder than it should. Give me a minute and we'll use our crafty knife and our prying skills to see if we plugged the steel armor or not with that steel penetrating tip. Maybe hard to see but it almost did plug you can see that that's a raised piece of the steel there almost got through just like last time with the ar 500 armor the 16 inch barrel would probably definitely take that through these other ones we'll have to throw something that's going to fragment and try to take the front coating off to see if what these other ones are going to do let's try the 556 threats all right now we have a palmetto state armory 10 and a half inch upper, has a one and seven twist. We have some Aguila 223 Remington, 55 grain full metal jacket. Then we have some Independence XM855i. We, this is gonna be a little on the tricky side here. Kinda have a feeling it's gonna go through. Maybe should have brought the seven and a half inch, but we'll see what's gonna happen. So the M193, is first. We'll take a shot pretty much center mass on the plate maybe. Velocity 24.50 and now our M855. Velocity 2594. Still no fragmentation. Maybe we'll try something I know that can't penetrate the plate, like a steel core 9mm, just to see if we get any fragmentation off the plate. I don't see any. Our first shot was right here, and our second was right there. Really hard to see. Tiny holes. But what do you think about the back, guys? Front row. Got a penetration on both there. Not the back on the M855. Now the M193 kind of looks like it just barely squeaked through there. You can see that the metal's discolored and it kind of like extended out of there. The M855, clean hole right through there. Looks like maybe you would need a seven and a half inch to stop the 223. I think that's still gonna go through. Like I said, let's try some of that steel core nine millimeter just to see if we can get any fragmentation off this plate. All right, let's step up to the trusty nine millimeter. This sure should give us some fragmentation. We have some Swedish M39B. It has that really thick steel nose on it. And then we have the Czech. 9 millimeter. This has a steel bimetal jacket along with a steel core, mild though, and then just five rounds of some 124 grain FMJ. Got our CZ Scorpion Evo here with the 7.72 inch barrel. Thirteen sixty-three. Fourteen seventy, and we'll just stack these like right next to them. Twelve sixty, twelve forty four, twelve fifty three, 
1231, 1280. Still not detecting any fragmentation in our cardboard makeshift frag detector here. Again, now, usually only when you start shooting the higher velocity rounds at your level three steel plates that you're gonna start getting fragmentation that can separate the line x coating there so that's pretty good look at that thank you heart thank you for shooting me i placed a bunch of our nine millimeter center mass what do you guys think should be no surprise there is no penetration anywhere labels getting torn up there's some dimples there that m39b and that check stuff pretty cool to see if I can get them out of there normally they mushroom over pretty hard but that was kind of expected I'd say if you had a need for a lightweight multi-curve level 3a plus hard panel this definitely would take the cake and we do still have some area left on here that we could try a few other threats against not sure what we could come up with I mean we could probably shoot it with 50 AE definitely wouldn't go through maybe leave a little more dimple on the back but i highly doubt it usually against steel you need the higher velocity threats like our 556 i could test the seven and a half inch with m193 or 55 grain full metal jacket drop me a comment below if you want to do that i'd like to thank caddy or katie for providing us with body armor to test and torture my patreon supporters and you all for watching until next time catch you at the range